Now we're on to the next segment of this session, and we're going to turn our attention to messaging to national, state, and local decision makers. And we'll again have time for a couple of questions at the end after our next two presenters. So first, please welcome Marla Hollander. Marla is a National Partnership Manager for Voices for Healthy Kids at the American Heart Association. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So I am uh, really grateful to be here today on behalf of the American Heart Association and Voices for Healthy Kids and, and just really honored to be able to share our work um, focused on messaging and, and policy change with local, state, and national leaders. Um, I am going to share that I am stepping in at the last minute, so I'm going to be referring to notes a little bit because I've had 24 hours to take a look at the presentation, so bear with me. I'm going to do my best and make sure that you guys walk out of here with a few key tips on how to message your government officials and what we've learned through six years of work. Um, and I'll also, just by introduction of myself, just share a little bit of, this is really fun for me, because I cut my teeth. My very first job was working in health communications and social marketing. Um, and then my journey took me to the world of public health. Um, and then I met Susie while I was doing a fellowship at the CDC. And one of my first lessons in life was message um, and, and having salient benefit for audiences was really instrumental. And it was before the verb campaign pain on the everywhere you go, uh, physical activities everywhere you go, and getting messages out like, I'm energized. That was a really salient benefit. So I take that work with me wherever I go. Um, now I have the pleasure of working um, to, to um, advance state and local policy work, different kinds of messaging. Um, around that, um, and really on, on the behalf of encouraging healthy communities um, through policy and advocacy efforts. Um, so Voices for Healthy Kids um, is a joint initiative of the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the American Heart Association, um, really working to make all of the places that, that our kids live, um, learn, and play healthier um, through public policy advocacy. Um, we work with a team of experts across the country. Um, the initiative aims to engage, organize, mobilize um, communities to help all children grow up a healthy weight. Um, and um, we do that. Let me find the uh, right button. There we go. We do that um, really in four buckets of work. Um, we fund communities to mount campaigns. Um, so that's a big portion of our work, um, supporting their, uh, their issue advocacy campaigns. Um, we provide technical assistance to those campaigns in a whole variety of ways, helping them um, do um, the really great work that we, they do. Um, the part of um, today that I'm going to focus on is really our um, campaign research and development area, where we are building tools and resources to help advocates message in really interesting ways. Um, and the fourth bucket is that we do all of this work in great collaboration and partnership with a whole variety of other national partners and really infuse in this um, umbrella of equity. Um, we really need to be passing policies that are supporting um, and helping those people that are most at risk for um, disease. So um, some of what I'm going to sh you know, share is lessons learned. We are about to reach um, 200 public policy campaign wins over the course of six years. It's really exciting, things from complete streets to physical activity in schools um, to expanding um, the footprint of Head Start to sugary beverages. There's um, about 17 or 18 different policies we work on. Um, and we're going to share a little bit about how we message. So um, what have we learned? Well, first let me start with who we're messaging to. So um, I have heard a little bit about um, public policy today, but we're really going to hone in on um, those people who have the impact to change policy and legislation. So legislators, city, man city, um, city council members, those that are 
um, advancing public policy on a, on a regular basis um, and really focus in on how we message them. It could be we're messaging one person, what their avenues of influence are. It could be we're messaging an entire, um, an entire committee that's responsible for passing legislation. It's unique um, uh, campaign by campaign. And then kind of secondary to that is um, who are the influencers of um, of those leaders. That's really crucial um, to our messaging work. We're not creating broad bucket um, communications campaigns. We're really focusing directly on what is the message that that um, politician or that administrator needs to know. Um, so we're going to kind of go through this a little bit. We're going to talk about tips on how we talk about the issue from apologies change frame, key messages that have been found to be effective, user-friendly charts that show what language you use and what language you don't use, um, and um, really infusing um, equity um, throughout. It's hard, but it's doable. We're learning. We keep tweaking and learning. Um, and then what to say and what not to say. So we've heard values a lot. Um, and this really came out up as we started thinking across the board. And again, we've mounted 200, cam we've, we've mounted 200 successful campaigns. Um, and the message research that we've done is really founded in 18 national polls that we've done and hundreds of state and local polls. So really digging into what the constituency across the country is thinking about the different policy areas. Um, and when we think about the frame of messages, it's different for each community, right? So we have conservative lawmakers and conservative communities, and we have liberal, con liberal um, legislators and communities. Um, and there are different messages from a, from a pure science perspective. You know, some don't want to hear, you know, we have to fix health of, the health of people. Um, but if you go at it from a values-based perspective, um, what we've learned is that everyone has shared values across the board, whether or not they're conservative or liberal in New York or Colorado. Shared values really matter. So it's in how you frame the message um, that we've really learned. So. Um, instead of walking into a legislator's office and saying, we have a really big problem with childhood obesity, um, you know, you can walk in and say, doesn't every child deserve the right to be healthy? How do we help you do that? Let's problem solve together. And we call that, what we've learned is that door opener to a conversation that might never have happened with different legislators. So here are some of the things that we've learned. I'm going to go through some of these. Um, you know, we use this language, but not this language. So describing personal behavior. We've heard that that is not helpful. That makes it an individual responsibility. So instead of describing the, ind the personal or individual behavior, lean in with what the global problem is for that community. Is it the school community? Is it the city? Is it the state? Et cetera. Um, why does it make it difficult to eat healthy, be active in those environments? Um, don't bombard with all of these words. Um, be very clear about the facts and the magnitude of the problem. Done. Keep moving. Um, imagery that invokes wars, battles, game playing, n not, a helpful, uh, not a helpful thing to do. Instead, um, we want to um, invoke a sense of cooperation and partnership, and we're in this together. Um, all right, so how do we be inclusive? We, we don't want to talk about Americans. We don't want to talk about citizens. We want to talk about people living in the United States so that we are making sure that we are supporting all of those communities within, all of those people within our communities. Um, we don't talk about poor. We have bad, um, we, have, we think badly about poor people a lot. It's just a preconceived notion that, that poor people 
perhaps are not as worthy. It's not the right thing, but that's what is a, it's a preconceived notion in a lot of people's minds. So instead of talking about poor, talk about underserved. Um, these people deserve to have resources, the same resources that, that is in this community should be in this community. It's the same tax base, et cetera. So put it in a different frame. Um, preventing childhood obesity. We've talked about obesity. I think when we started our initiative, um, our, our goal was to end, you know, was to deal with childhood obesity. We now talk about healthy weight. We not, might need to talk about the weight issue. In most of our communications, we talk about healthy kids and healthy communities. Um, I'm gonna kind of jump down um, a little bit. Um, general community means something different to every single person. So when you're working on public policy campaigns, really narrow that down into what your community means. It could be a virtual community, it could be a community of kids, it could be a city, it could be a neighborhood, so many different things. Um, focus, do not focus on what is at risk for being lost. That's a deficit-based frame. People em embrace and want positive focus, what stands to be gained for everyone. Um, exercise, not, nothing new, don't use it. It's, it's not a term that people really love. Focus on kids being physically active, active play, moving around. All right. So, um, some tips and techniques um, for doing this work. Um, first, I just you know really want to highlight the messenger matters um, in these storytellings. Um, it's personal when you're talking about politics, and and one of the one of the. Um, um, pieces of research we found, I can't remember who shared it at the opening session, but people trust their local lawmakers more than they trust their state lawmakers, more than they trust their federal. So when it gets local, it gets personal and people trust more. So um, in that context, messenger matters a lot. Um, I'm going to share just a little story um, from a campaign we did in, in um, Ohio, um, they call it Maddie's story, um, NAACP, we were working on a Complete Streets campaign, um, and, um, and they were having a lot of difficulty kind of figuring out what the message was, what was strategy, they had NAACP sharing different messages and strategies, and it wasn't until Maddie, um, a disabled young woman in the community, said, I can't access, I can't get to work, my wheelchair can't Get, I can't go from the bus there and visualized um, and came up with solutions to the, to the problem. We need to pass this policy. It will help me and others get to work, et cetera. Um, the policy pa passed, and she was the right messenger at the right time. All right, I'm going to keep moving. Um, Let's see. Um, we want to identify um, solutions together as, um, as a community and then customize the messages. Community members most affected by an issue are the best people to help you understand the issue. Um, even with all of the message research, you need to constantly hone it and, and you know, figure, out, figure out what's right for the community, state, or, or other efforts. Um, be strategic, again, about who tells your story. Um, then show how everyone benefits. What, what is beneficial for one group is often beneficial for all groups. So conveying that message, um, like curb cuts. Curb cuts were originally a policy solution for the disabled community. Having curb cuts lifts up opportunities for all people, people in walkers, moms in strollers, um, people with, with poor sight because they can't see the curb. So, whole, so the solutions lift up for all. So tell the story about benefiting the entire community. All right, I'm going to move on really quickly, words to avoid. Um, and, um, you know, I'm sorry if these aren't really clear, um, but um, let's see. Um, one of the most important ones here is using things like the problem is, 
always lead, again, with a benefit. Here's the solution when you're talking to policymakers. They know they have a lot of problems, but talk to the solution. Um, it's cost efficient. It can lead, ter can lead to short-term scarcity or thinking. Really want to switch that to being effective. Um, and my button is going off, so I'm going to end right here. Um, with um, you know some work we did um, on this message guide for policy advocates, and this really gets to the heart of our equity work, um, and and being able to again open the door to policymakers and having that first conversation about values-based work has been really crucial in making sure those communities that are under-resourced, for example are benefiting from different types of policy language that puts those communities, you know, securing funding first um, and lifting everyone up together. I hope I imparted some messages.